Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So it is Shabbat, uh, the day this video is going up. And in case you missed the announcement, I decided I didn't want to have two different channels. And so you will be finding all of my uh, scripture readings for Saturdays here at my normal channel. Today I'm going to be reading out of the Tree of Life version of the Bible. It is uh, my second favorite version of the Bible. My first favorite is the Complete Jewish Study Bible. Uh, it uses all of the Hebrew names for people and places and things like that. Uh, this one is a great one if you're wanting to begin learning the Hebrew names because it only uses the Hebrew names for some of the people and places in the Bible as opposed to all of them. The scriptures that I'm reading today are for Saturday, June 10th. You can find the entire week's reading schedule over on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, and I will put a link down below for the page that takes you straight to the reading schedule. So, let's get started. So, to begin, we're going to be starting in the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verses 30, through chapter 12, verse 16. This is my Bible journal. It has the same reading plan that you can find on my website. This is from the website for Daily Bread for Busy Moms. They print a new version every single year, um, but I understand they are already sold out for this year. But they'll be selling the next year's ones somewhere around August or so. I always share a link for that when they go on sale every year. All right, Numbers chapter 11, starting in verse 30. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Now a wind went out from Adonai and drove quails from the sea. He brought them into the camp to about a day's journey in any direction, about two cubits above the ground all around the camp. The people went out all that day and all that night and all the following day and collected quail. No one gathered less than ten omers. They spread them out all around the camp. Yet while the meat was between their teeth, before it was swallowed, Adonai's anger burned against the people. So Adonai struck the people with a severe plague. For that reason, the name of that place was called Kibroth Hatava, which means the graves of greediness, because they buried the people who were craving. From Kibroth Hatava, the people journeyed to Hazaroth and stayed in Hazaroth. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses on account of the Cushite woman he married, because he had married a Cushite woman. They asked, Has Adonai spoken only through Moses? Hasn't he also spoken through us? Adonai heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more so than anyone on the face of the earth. Immediately Adonai said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, the three of you come out to the tent of meeting. So the three came out. Adonai descended in a column of cloud, stood at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and called to Aaron and Miriam. The two of them stepped forward. Now hear my words, he said. When there is a prophet of Adonai, I reveal myself in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. In all my house he is faithful. I speak with him face to face, plainly and not in riddles. He even looks at the form of Adonai. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Adonai's anger burned against them, and he left them. When the cloud lifted up from above the tent, behold, Miriam had za'arat, like snow. As Aaron turned toward her, behold, she had za'arat. He said to Moses, Please, my lord, don't hold against us the sin we have committed so foolishly. Don't let her be like a stillborn baby who comes from his mother's womb with his flesh half eaten away. So Moses cried to Adonai, saying, O God, heal her now. Adonai said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, would she not be in shame for seven days? Let her be confined outside the camp for seven days. After that, she may be brought back. So Miriam was restricted to outside the camp for seven days. The people did not move on until Miriam was brought back. Afterward, the people left Hazaroth and encamped in the wilderness of Paran. That was Numbers, chapter 11, verses 30 to 12, verse 16. 
Next, we're going to move on to the book of Zechariah. And we're in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 10, through chapter 4, verse 7. Oi, oi, flee from the land of the north. It is a declaration of Adonai. Because I scatter you like the four winds of heaven, it is a declaration of Adonai. Oi, Zion, escape, you who are living with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says Adonai Zvaot, he has sent me after glory to the nations that plundered you, because whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand against them, and they will be plunder to their servants. Then you will know that Adonai Zvaot has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming, and I will live among you. It is a declaration of Adonai. In that day, many nations will join themselves to Adonai, and they will be my people, and I will dwell among you. Then you will know that Adonai Dvaot has sent me to you. Adonai will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land, and will once again choose Jerusalem. Be silent before Adonai, all flesh, for he has aroused himself from his holy dwelling. Then he showed me Joshua the Kohen Gadol, standing before the angel of Adonai and the Satan, standing at his right hand to accuse him. Adonai said to the Satan, Adonai rebukes you, the Satan. Indeed, Adonai, who, he, who has chosen Jerusalem, rebukes you. Is not this man a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was wearing filthy garments and standing before the angel who answered and spoke to those standing before him, saying, Remove the filthy garments from him. Then to Joshua he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you and will dress you with fine clothing. Then I said, Place a clean turban on his head. So they put a pure turban on his head and clothed him with garments while the angel of Adonai stood by. The angel of Adonai exhorted Joshua, saying, Thus says Adonai Zvaot, If you will walk in my ways and keep my charge, then you will judge my house and watch over my courts, and I will give you a place to walk among these standing here. Listen well, Joshua, Cohen, Kadol, both you and your companions seated before you, because they are men who are a sign. Behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone I have laid before Joshua is the one stone with seven facets. I will engrave an inscription, declares Adonai Zvaot, that I will remove the iniquity of this land in one day. In that day, declares Adonai Zvaot, every man will invite his neighbor to sit under the vine and under the fig tree. Then the angel who had been speaking with me returned and woke me like a man who was awakened from his sleep. He asked me, What do you see? I replied, Behold, I see a solid gold menorah with its bowls at the top of it and its seven lamps on it with seven pipes for the lamps that are on top of it. Also two olive trees are by it, one on the right side of the bowl and the other on the left side of it. Then I responded by saying to the angel speaking with me, What are these, my lord? The angel who spoke with me responded by saying, You do not know what these are? I replied, No, my lord. Then he responded to me by saying, This is the word of Adonai to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my ruach, my spirit, says Adonai Zvaot. What are you, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you will become a plain. You will bring out the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Next we're going to turn to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 5. The flies have found me. The flies are so bad this year. They're going to be harassing me for the rest of the time I'm out here. <laughs> All right, chapter 5, starting in verse 8 through verse 21. For once you were in darkness, but now in union with the Lord you are light. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. 
for it is disgraceful even to mention the things that are done by them in secret. Yet everything exposed by the light is being made visible, for everything made visible is light. This is why it says, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Messiah will shine on you. So pay close attention to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise. Make the most of your time, because the days are evil. For this reason, do not be foolish, but understand what the, Lord wills, what the Lord's will is, and do not get drunk on wine, for that is recklessness. Instead, be filled with the Ruach, be speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music in your hearts to the Lord, always giving thanks for everything to God the Father, in the name of the Lord, Yeshua the Messiah. Also submit yourselves one to another, out of reverence for the Messiah. And that is the scripture reading for today. Again, if you would like to get the entire week's schedule on my website, I have a page that updates every single week with the new scripture readings, and it has a free printable PDF that you can download or save to your mobile device. Thanks for joining me out here for today's scriptures. Shabbat Shalom.